And I want you to look at verse number 16, if you would. Ezekiel chapter 21 and verse number 16. All right, we'll read that verse, give you the subject matter, and then uh, we'll take you to three different parts of the scripture here and uh, preach to you for just a little bit, okay? Amen. You can still smile. I know singing's over, but you can still smile. Oh, we got to listen to the preaching now. All right. Verse number 16. Are we there? All right, look at it. It says, Go thee one way or other, either on the right hand or on the left, whithersoever thy face is set. I'm going to preach on this subject. You can't have it both ways. It's going to be either or. It can't be either and something. It's got to be either or. Let's pray, and then we'll go to the book of Genesis. Father, thank you, Lord, for the singing, for the glory that uh, we felt here this morning as Jesus was lifted up. Thank you, Father, for the old songs that people have written and uh, how it still touches our hearts. We ask, dear God, that you'd bless in these few minutes and uh, pray that Jesus once again will be high and lifted up in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter number one. Genesis chapter number one. I want to deal with either or. Either or. All right. Genesis one. Verse number 26. Verse number 26. And God said. Your page is turning. That's good. And God said. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. I want to deal with either or. You can't change. It's got to be one or the other. And that has to do, and it's amazing how that God starts this out in Genesis chapter number one. This is the first thing he's going to say. He's going to say, he's going to talk about the person you are. You are either male or female. Now, why would God start that out like that? Because he, he, he knew of the mess that our country is trying to throw this philosophy in of this transgender junk. You are either male or female. You can't be both. <laughs> you can't be one one day and the next the next day. Amen? You can't be a male and decide you want to join a swim team and be a female. You can't do it. It's impossible. I was, uh, Lori had some tests this week. We went down to the hospital. She had to get some blood work and everything. This lady was at the front desk, and um, I was talking to her, and come to find out that she was from Boston. <laughs> she was from Boston. And I said, you know what? I said, uh, I don't have any connection with Boston other than NBA basketball. I used to like the Boston Celtics. And she said, Larry Bird. I said, you are exactly right. I said, that after he retired and everything, I said, I have no interest in it. Now, you say, why, why did you say all that? I'll tell you why. Every Tuesday night in Beckley, West Virginia, a bunch of us guys would get together, and we would play basketball for a couple of hours. Well, the gym was closed that night, so a buddy of mine, PK, his name's PK, PK said, let's go down to Princeton. He said, just, a, you know, 45 minutes away from Beckley. He said, we're, we'll go down there. And he said, I know, I know where they got a game going. And I said, okay. Well, I was a big Boston fan during that time. I was a big fan of uh, Larry Bird. I had, Larry, I had the practice jersey, number 33, Celtics. When he came out, when Converse came out with the Bird shoe, I got a pair of those, or Lori got me a pair of those. I even, I, I didn't plan this, but I even broke the right finger on my hand just like he did. I had it taped up, and I'm, and I'm thinking, I'm in, I, look, look, I'm in a Larry Bird mode when I want to play basketball. And so we went down there, and, and a bunch of, PK knew all those guys down there, and he said, uh, who's this guy? He said, it's my friend, works at the bank with me. And he said, that guy thinks he's Larry Bird, doesn't he? 
He, he said, yeah, he does. And uh, so, so we played, yeah, I had a pretty good game and everything. And he said, uh, he said to PK, he said, that guy really thinks he's Bird. And PK says, listen, he really does <laughs> think he's Larry Bird. Now, fact is, I was not Larry Bird. Fantasy, I wanted to be Larry Bird. Feelings, when I was playing, I felt like I was Larry Bird. But I was not Larry Bird. I don't care how I felt. I don't care what I fantasized. The fact was, I am not and I was not Larry Bird. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you, God says there is either male or female. You can't have it both ways. So it has to do with the person that you are. And then Jesus went on to say the same thing in the Gospels, in Matthew's Gospel and Mark's Gospel. So the person that you are. Go to the next book, Exodus, for point number two. And you how many books in the Bible? All right, so we got Genesis, Exodus, and then we got 64 more books to go, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. My wife says no. Look at Exodus chapter 32, if you would. Exodus chapter 32. Let's look at the second thing, either or. And there's a bunch of them. In fact, Brother Bill, in his Sunday school lesson, brought out a couple. Exodus chapter 32. I want you to look at verse number 16. Exodus 32, verse number 16. Exodus 32. And if you'll look at verse number 16. And the tables... And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. We know that's the Ten Commandments, right? Verse number 34. I want you to look at verse number 34. Therefore, now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angels shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf. Now, here's what I want you to see. I want you to see this, that you, you are either, and, and, in fact, God says after they made the calf, in fact, af after that had happened, God said to them, he said, who is on the Lord's side among you? Let him, and, and Moses said, let him come get on my side or let him come unto me. Now, I said all that to say this. You are either on the Lord's side or you're not on his side you, you can't be in the middle you can't be wishy-washy you can't say well I'm just uh, you know I'll, I'll play I'll play this game for uh, Sunday I'll be for the Lord rest of the week and uh, you know I'm kind of in middle ways so you can't be middle ways in this thing you either for him or you're not for him in fact uh, are, are you are you on the Lord's side you're either for him or you're against him brother Bill brought that out this morning you're either saved or you're what? Or you're lost. You're either going to heaven or you'll die and burn in a place called hell. You say, well, what about purgatory? There's no such thing. There can't be. Look, it's either heaven or hell. It's either you're saved or you're lost. It's either you've been born again or you've never had the new birth. You can't have it both ways. When it comes to the person that you are, when it comes to the position that you take, you can't have it both ways. You either you either identify yourself. You see, Jesus went to a cross. We've heard about that this morning. And on each side of the cross were two thieves. One trusted him. One said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. The other rejected him. You're either, you are either identifying yourself with the one who trusted him or the one who rejected him. You can't have it both ways. Either or. Either you're in Christ or you're outside of Christ. You can't have it both ways. You say, well, preacher, one of these days I'm going to, well, you're on the wrong side of Jesus. Either you're in his family. That, that blessed my heart when you talked about your folks coming to see you. And, and it was his family that came to see him and surprised him on his birthday. But if you're saved, you're in the family of God. You say, well, I'm not, well, I've joined the church. We, joining the church don't get you in the family of God. It might get you some friends. It may give you some connections. I don't know. You say, well, I was baptized. It just it, Look, without Christ, without being saved, you only got wet. That's it. 
So you're either in his family or you're not in his family. And by the way, the day you trust Christ, you become a member of his family, you'll always be in his family. Amen. Always. If Ralph's son had not showed up, he was still Ralph's son. If Ralph's son decided, Daddy, I just don't care about you anymore. That's not going to change the relationship. He's still Ralph's son. That will change fellowship, but it'll never change relationship. Listen, you're either in God's family or you're not in God's family. And you get in there by the new birth. You've either been born again or you've never had that new birth. Let me give you another thing. Matthew chapter number 12 now. The person that you are, you're either male or female. The position you take, you're either with him or against him or you're for him. And the purpose that you have. Look at Matthew chapter number 12. Matthew chapter 12. I want you to look at something here. What's the purpose of being saved, preacher? Why are we saved? Not just to go to heaven. That's a benefit. That's a, that's a, I, I heard somebody say that's a reward. It's not a reward. That's all of grace. When you get saved, God writes your name in the book of life. You don't earn anything like that. It's all of grace. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Matthew chapter 12. Look at verse number 30. Jesus said, he that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So the purpose you have, you're either gathering or you're scattering. You either walk in the flesh or you walk in the spirit. And as a Christian, how many of you saved? Say amen. amen. As a Christian, you're either carnal or you're spiritual. Now the natural man is lost but the Christian can be either carnal or spiritual but you can't have it both ways can I can I can I fess up y'all heard about y'all know what it means to fess up right can I may I confess is that better I got to tell you this and, and probably you may agree you may not agree with me but there are some days that I'm carnal I'm a Christian, but there are some days I'm carnal. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means you're kind of wanting to cater to the flesh. Car Why do you think they call it a carnal bull? It doesn't appeal to your spirit. It appeals to you having fun. Some of you may have, uh, some of you this morning may have brought chili con carne. That means chili with meat, flesh. But can I say to you that I'm not spiritual all the time. I wish I was. As a preacher, I would have never have admitted that. I, I, don't, I don't polish my halo every Sunday morning. In fact, I don't even have one. But I'm going to tell you, as a Christian, there are some days that I'm carnal. And then there are some days that I'm spiritual. But I can't be both of them at the same time. You want to see the carnality of this preacher? Stick me in Walmart for about five minutes. I get carnal real fast. I'm not bragging about that. But I'm just telling you. We're either carnal or we're spiritual. But you can't be both. The purpose that you have. We're either good witnesses. In fact, didn't Jesus said. I'll give you the Holy Ghost, you shall be witnesses unto me. Now, we're either good witnesses or we're bad witnesses. Again, I wish I could say I'm a good witness all the time. I wish I could say that. But I can't always say that and be truthful. My wife reminds me several times. She says, she said, you didn't sound very nice when you said that. I said, I, I thought I was okay. She said, well, to me, it didn't sound very nice. I said, well, that's just the way I talk. She said, didn't sound good. <laughs> so, I mean, she's got a pretty strong point sometimes. We're either serving or we're selfish. And the judgment seat of Christ 
I promise you, will give us a correct record of our Christian life. In fact, he puts it this way, whether it be good or bad. We're either obedient or disobedient. We either glorify him or we don't bring glory to him at all. Think of Lot. Think of Samson. Think of David. Think of Jonah. Even think of Peter. Didn't always bring glory to God. Didn't always do that. Let's close with Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes is the last verse we'll look at. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Right after the book of Proverbs, you'll have the book of Ecclesiastes chapter number 12. And if you'll look at verse number 13 and verse number 14. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 and verse number 14. Solomon writes, he says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. I ask you this, are you saved? He said, Preacher, I hope so. That sounds like the middle ground to me. You're either saved or you're lost. When somebody says to me, I hope so, you know how I deal with them? I deal with them as being lost. Because God wants you to know that you're saved. I know that I was lost before I got saved. I knew that. Nobody had to tell me that. But if I had gotten a little bit of religion, if I'd done a couple of religious things, I would have had some doubt probably. But let me reassure you this morning, you're either saved or you're lost. There's no middle ground there. Which are you? Which are you? Our Father, please, we ask, dear God, that you would touch hearts right now. We ask, Father, that every single one of us will search our hearts and ask ourselves this question. Am I saved or am I lost? Am I going to heaven or am I going to a place called hell? Father, please, I pray that nothing, absolutely nothing, will get in the way of this invitation this morning. For we ask it in Jesus, precious in his wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Would